Hey, 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 welcome back to another Prairie Slicer Ranch Farm Vlog. This guy's Aaron, and thank you for tuning in, my friends. Well, what can I say? The polar vortex is gone now, at least for the time being. It's supposed to be about minus four in the next couple of days. Right now, I think it's about minus 12 to 14 Celsius, so it's really nice out. But... You guess what we have. You get one guess. <laughs> we got another calf down on the cow side. We brought a few of the cows in from the back to the front over that little cold snap we had. We had about a week of minus 38 with the wind chill to about minus 48 Celsius with the wind chill. So it was damn cold. And we had to bring cows in to the calving barn just to make sure. And it paid off, kind of. We're gonna head out, we're gonna check on the cows and then we're gonna go tag, possibly ring, I'm not sure if it's a steer or heifer calf. It was born late last night. I found it on the midnight checks. It was fine though, it was in the barn, in a nice bedded barn at the far back, out of the wind. It was doing good, it's perky. So we're gonna go check him or her out. We're gonna give her a first defense bolus. Now I am trying out this first defense gel bolus due to the fact that we had some issues with coccidiosis in our calves, our new calves last year. So we're gonna try to nip that right in the old behind with a first defense gel bolus. I've heard lots of good things about it. So we're gonna try it out. I'm gonna let you know what the long-term effects are. I'll let you know if it actually works or not, or if we have no cases, but coccidiosis kind of comes in spurts. So, you know, we could get lucky, but we're going to do this preventatively because it says it works. Apparently it works quite well. I know a couple uh, cow ranchers in the area, they highly suggest it. So I'm not afraid to try it. It's a couple extra bucks, but maybe it's cheap insurance. I'm going to talk a little bit about this coccidiosis prevention using first defense, how to administer it. It's not much different than the pills, uh, but you have to administer it a certain way just to safely administer it to the calf. But anyways, Aaron, that's enough chit chat. Let's pit her, pat her and get her. Woo! Jose! Jose, what do you think, buddy? You're a good dude. You know that? <laughs> Make sure folks if you're new to the channel or if you're one of my longtime subscribers, please hit that thumbs up Hit that share button share this on any of your social media platforms I'd be very ecstatic if you did so so thanks. Let's get back to work So before we head out there and treat those uh, that uh, that one calf with that first defense gel tube uh, bolus, I'm just gonna give you the brief the briefing of the medication itself. It covers you against coronavirus, E. coli virus, and rotavirus in calves. You have to always keep it refrigerated or cooled. Do not let it warm up to room temperature or it'll be inactive at that point. Make sure you have the head up against the thigh. And I'm gonna be showing this all in person, right away with my GoPro as soon as I get out there. And uh, I'll make a video, show you all straight up how we do it. And I'm sure there's a little bit other tweaks you could do to it to do it, but this is how we do it. Get to the left side of the throat, kind of just against the cheek. Don't push it right down the throat. Put it kind of left side against the left cheek. Slowly and gently squeeze the tube, the syringe out. Don't do it too fast. Don't choke the calf. Kind of let it naturally gravitate down its um, esophagus. You can at that point just gently, you don't forcefully, but gently hold the mouth shut, kind of tilt the head up and massage the throat if you feel necessary. Now, after you do all this, the calf should take it in and uh, once it's absorbed by the calf's body, it'll start developing antibodies um, as the medication is specified for. All right, ready to go. Gonna mark the uh, mother calf. You take the baby calf. Give it its first defense, tag it, RFID it, move on. So let's go get her done. I'll show you how to uh, give this first de defense bowl. It's pretty basic, but we'll do her. Well, one way to separate the mother cow from the calf, feed them up. They need a bale. They had about a quarter yesterday. They ate really hard. We're gonna move that feeder. We're gonna throw another one or two bales in there. They'll probably all come out, then we can close the door on the barn and then tend to the little baby calf.
taking shots at the enemy. I'm gonna make it to the top. There's a little cow. Hello, mama. Let's go eat. Oh, yeah. He's nurse. Look at those milk. Look at that milk bag. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Here. Come on. Let's go. Yeah. There we go. Holy moly. Big old girls. Don't mama. She's mad, so we can get this done. This calf definitely sucked. You can see it's full. Getting my tag ready. This is just a radio frequency ID for the calf. I'm gonna put this here. Yeah, big heifer. I'm gonna go over it, lift his head up, tilt it towards the left side. Oh. Left side. Massage his throat. Massaging. It took it all. Radio frequency button on the end. Flat side. On the outside button. We're also going to spray tag mom, so I know it's her calf. Right now it's not hard to tell, but just to make sure on her back, we put a spurt in her. Most importantly, first defense, heavy, but that's okay. I just want to give her a shot of spray paint so I know. There shouldn't be any confusion, but if we have a bunch overnight, good enough. Keep an eye on him, we'll see if these first defense work. Tag that little guy, he sucks for sure. Her udders are, she's got lots of milk. They were sucked, they're wrinkled up. She's not a young girl, she's got lots of milk. Whoa, Jose, watch it buddy. She's good mom, I'm not too worried about this guy. This guy's doing good. So, we should be good. Oh, we're gonna go check out the dairy barn, see if the heifers are doing anything. Check the back here. And that's that. That could be a good replacement. She's a good mom. Look at Jose getting chased. It's a little problem we're having with him. He's good when I'm in there, but then when I'm out, he's a little bit naughty. Now, we're on the heifer side here. There's a couple girls getting pretty close. Looking pretty close to calving. So we're gonna start feeding them up closer to the two barns here. The one barn is just an open pole shed, it's open to the south. We close the door to the north typically. But we also have a dairy barn beside it with rooter lights down the middle. So it stays a little bit warmer than the regular old pole barn. But it's uh, cheap security. So if I feed them up here, we should be pretty good if I have to lock them up overnight if there's one or two presenting. And uh, we gotta get them into one of the barns just to make sure at least we don't have any problems. Now this time of year I try not to bed too much outside. So I don't want the cows going out into the open and calving. I want them to go into the shelters, right? So we keep very little bedding outside until uh, we got a good grasp on calving. But like for example, this is about the most we'll do. I'll still feed up on this little area. But at least I have less areas to check. But with that said, you always have to check the areas with snow and drifts and behind buildings and nooks and crannies. You know how they go. Some cows just like to go off on their own and calve and usually that's behind a bluff in some snow, unfortunately. So uh, it's one of the uh, beasts of calving in the winter. But uh, although we weren't planning on calving this time, we just had a bull get out early. That's the bottom line. So that happens sometimes. So. Get a couple more bales in for these guys, or girls I should say, and let's uh, move on. Well, there we have it. I got uh, our couple infrared 
bulbs up. I'm gonna hook up the other two. I got two new ones and close it off at the end. Once calving is imminent here, we haven't had one yet on the heifer side, but we're well prepared now. So we should be able to handle calving with this and the pole barn. This is the really cold nights. If we have issues, cow gets locked up in there. If we really have to, we can open up the other side. However, if the sheep, sheep start lambing, we can use the other side. We have brooders set up, infrared lights, etc. So we're all set up. We're bedded here on the heifer side. They're uh, fed up good. And um, yeah, I think we're pretty ready to go here. Get that little shit to the feedlot. But uh, yeah, good head start. Well, thank you for tuning in, folks. Appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe, hit the thumbs up, drop by anytime, and we'll catch you very soon with another Prairie Sister Ranch video. Cheers for now. Stay warm. Have a good one.